Hello there. Hey, Zach. Hey there. All right, so Zach, I did tell everybody else that my power's out and I am tethering on not too much laptop battery, but if I get cut off, Chris will um, take on the questions and you can keep answering them. <laughs> um, so yeah, if Zach wants to, Zach will give a little bit of an introduction. Um, we are gonna start with the questions from last week that didn't get answered in the concept presentation. And then if you have other questions as we go, feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll be collecting them. Um, and when we're done answering the questions from last week, uh, we can also take questions if people want to unmute and ask the question themselves. That's totally fine. All I ask is that people um, be concise and so that we can get to as many questions as possible. That would be great. Uh, so, okay, Zach, do you wanna give a little bit of an introduction? Yes, of course. Um, hi, everyone. Zach McCune here. Uh, good to see you right here, right now, uh, for the first office hours, which is basically we wanted to have an open time to to keep talking about uh, the Movement Brand Project, some of the questions that were posed in last week's brand concept presentation, and take on additional questions. Um, I think overall, this format is uh, really meant to be kind of a dialogue and a discussion. So it will not have a very rigid agenda. Uh, just know that um, somebody asking to join, we will admit. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Open agenda, less formal than a, a normal meeting. Um, like many, many of you, I'm calling from my house in San Francisco, California. Um, and I have a cup of coffee because it is a little early for me. Um, it's actually a very exciting, this is the Norwegian Outdoor Society. It's like for hiking outside. Um, they host cabins you can stay in, which I've never done, but it's a goal of mine when we can travel again. So the project we're all working on here, or at least discussing, is the 2030 Movement Brand Project. And it's inspired by the strategic direction from the Movement Strategy Project which challenges us to grow really profoundly over the next 10 years and make it so that anyone who shares our vision can join us. Our brand, uh, our collective brand, the brand we all use as parts of this movement can help us make it possible for anyone to join us. It's an incredible tool for people to find us and understand us and participate in our work, in our mission, in our projects. Uh, what we know is that the current movement brand system is based on Wikimedia um, and the round uh, circle logo that is often shown in three colors, green, blue, red. Um, and we know that those brand materials have not had the success we would want because lots of people ask questions about them. Lots of people are confused by them. Now, we also know that some community members feel that they're working um, and that they inspire the right discussion, which is when people don't know a brand and you have to explain the brand, it gives you a chance to have the conversation you want to have, advancing the brand and explaining the movement. And that's one of the factors why this process is opt-in, uh, why it is not a comprehensive one-time design project that forces change on everyone. Basically, we are recognizing that the system's work for some members and don't work for other members. Uh, so it's an open process where we're collaborating to build a new design system. And when that design system is complete, it will be reviewed and ready for use by everyone in the movement with each individual affiliate able to kind of make the choice that's right for them at the time and to change that choice if they want in the future as self-determination is super important to our affiliates and to our movement members. Quick discussion of dates. Um, we are currently prepping work for possibly the most exciting part of this process, which is the naming convention discussions. That's planned for May 7th through the 21st. Um, at that time, we're gonna be showing the movement multiple options. Uh, we're gonna show them not just one approach to naming, but two or three. Um, and the approaches 
will range uh, from being heavily centered on Wikipedia to less centered on it. Um, so I think folks will see a range of possibilities there and the discussion will allow us to compare and contrast the advantages and the disadvantages of making a strong connection to Wikipedia, uh, maybe a lighter connection. Really, the dialogue that we expect to happen there will be pretty exciting because we know so many people have been concerned about what kinds of names might be considered and what they mean and what kind of problems they would create. So this is a moment where we'll get to look at some stuff and really kind of have it up on the wall and walk around it and talk about it. Um, I know that from the project team, there's a great deal of excitement of sharing this with you all because we've wanted folks to know that this is really as open to discussion as we've intended it to be. And this is a moment where people will see that the range of options leave a lot of space for self-determination. Exciting things ahead. So yeah, May 7th, that's when our naming convention materials will be shared. Uh, and with that, Elena, do you think I've missed anything for an overview? No, you've, I think you've given a great overview and an overview that leads perfectly into the first question that I queued up for this morning, um, which is about the self-determination and the opt-in system that the project has set up. So the question is about reducing confusion. If How do we achieve consistent branding um, if we don't achieve a situation where everyone is using the same branding? So we have an opt-in system. How does that lead to more consistency? And how does that reduce confusion? Hmm. Yeah, okay, th that's a good question. Um, so I think it's worth saying that right now we already don't use consistent branding. Um, so right now, the names between different parts of the movement are not clearly connected. Um, there's a set of naming systems that are used by chapters. Um, then there's a lot of flexibility in the naming and branding systems used by user groups. Um, the projects have a third set of conventions and even a really distinct set of color palettes that they use depending on what design style was in was kind of in vogue when they were developed and as a so i would say right now the movement is very uh inconsistent in a very organic way which is true to how we've formed uh which is and that's exciting um so the first thing is that like we've set out to make it more consistent um yes chris thanks for that reminder in the chat uh, we've set out to make it more consistent by actually really having a very big discussion about branding as a cohesive set of principles rather than an ad hoc set of decisions, right? Almost all of the brand materials we have now have been made as small, discrete decisions. This project, this group, uh, this identity, this time, uh, rather than a little bit more holistically. And that's why this is part of the movement strategy process is it's a moment where we're, we're considering so much about the movement's future that we said, let's bring branding into that discussion. Um, but for the person who asked this question, there's a definite moment, uh, probably several months to, to a few years, where we will see inconsistent branding between an old and a new, uh, between an old and a new system where parts of the movement will be using um, a new design system, a new branding system, and parts will be using an old branding system. That's again, I think, true to who we are, really. Um, we're not trying to make the Lufthansa uh, that's what I call it, the Lufthansa branding choice, where they famously worked very hard to make it so that on a single day, everything changed. The website, uh, the planes, the tickets, everything changed to a new design system. We're actually trying to acknowledge that we're an organic system. Uh, we, we, move, we move at the speed of our own priorities and our own uh, efforts. And so just as even moving in 2016 to a black and white logo, um, and a new na uh, new typeface, which is the foundation uses a new typeface now. Um, it's Montserrat, it's open source, rather than Gil Sands, which is what Wikimedia was set in originally. Like that change itself has been adopted very progressively. And now we see that around half of the chapters have made that change with no over overarching, like you have to do this. Um, just a, here's the system we've developed, here's the tools you have, and people did it. Uh, so in a sentence, yes, we will not see consistency immediately, 
But we believe that over time, by working together, we're going to make a system that works for many, many people. Uh, and so we're going to be able to work forward towards consistency in the future so that our projects are interconnected. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. Um, and to the point that you're making about inconsistency already existing and um, confusion already existing, um, we have a question about the difference between Wikimedia organizations and the projects. So the question is that we now exercise big efforts to explain to everyone that Wikimedia organizations are not Wikipedia editorial offices, in quotation. So renaming Wikimedia organizations to Wikipedia will make that harder. Do you think you're trying to solve one big problem and creating another big problem? That's such a great question. And um, hello, Rajib. Thanks for joining us. And Zico, thanks for taking notes. OK, repeating the question. Wikipedia is a project. Do you think that putting Wikipedia into the movement naming system will confuse the two? Or will make it even harder than it already is to distinguish between the two? Yeah. So when we uh, talked with community members, great, we got a Linux t-shirt here on Sergey. Uh, when we talked to community members last year, they told us that the number one problem to be solved for branding was reducing confusion. They were like, people get confused. Are we connected to Wikipedia? Are we not? Um, are we a part of a big movement? Are we not? And so if we simply trade confusion, like, oh, we've made it clear that we're connected to Wikipedia, but now we've implied all sorts of roles in editorial content that are untrue, we have not done our job. We have not been successful. Um, so we need to make sure that if we adopt the Wikipedia name, it is clearly differentiated from the Wikipedia project. Uh, it would it would just be an explicit failure of branding if using the Wikipedia name made it so that um, our community groups and our volunteers had a harder and harder time explaining what they do and doing what they're passionate about. Um, I think an example we can look at here is, yes, you can ask questions in chat and we'll add them to our list. Um, a, a good example to look at here is that um, nearby to me is the Yosemite National Park. Uh, it's a national park. It's big. It's famous. It has a half dome. It's closed. You can't go <laughs> right now. Um, Yosemite as a park has a number of features. Um, but there's also a nonprofit that supports the park that is not affiliated with the park rangers or anything. And they call themselves uh, Friends of Yosemite. Um, and this is a way of showing that they're connected to the organ, to like kind of the idea, the space, the park, Yosemite, but different than the rangers. Um, so it's a way they've used their name to differentiate between the kinds of services you could get from a ranger or an official park staff member like health or guidance on the trails. Um, and so that's the, that's the place we are right now with naming is how can we use words to indicate the correct relationship between things. Um, and that's why when we share things on May 7th, we know that we're, that's just round one. People are going to have to help us by poking and saying it doesn't do this. It, it's not enough of that. There's going to be more uh, work to be done. Great, thank you. Um, so moving towards Wikipedia as a solution for some of these problems that we're outlining here. Um, if people reject Wikipedia altogether, what is going to change later when they see how Wikipedia will be used in context? And then related to that, um, how much is the project team, the C team and the board ready to let community members go who don't agree with this decision. Lena, can you give me the front of that? I remember yeah. the second one, not the front <laughs> one. Yeah. The second one, yeah. the second I remember one's the pretty second one. Um, the first one is, so if people are already rejecting the Wikipedia name as a solution, how is that gonna change once they see Wikipedia in context, in the context of a larger branding system? Yes. Um, so 
this is a this is a really good question because it gets at some tensions that are within our movement. Um, the RFC has been a really clear signal that the undersigned um, voices in that request for comment uh, feel that any use of the Wikipedia name is not right for the movement. And there were a variety of reasons given for that, um, which we read closely. Simultaneously, we've had conversations with affiliate leaders, um, members of the movement strategy process, and a lot of our emerging user groups who have said that they're very confused by the branding system we use today, and that when they work, they often have to draw a very close connection between their be it nonprofit or their emerging user group and Wikipedia. Um, those folks uh, did not join the RFC. Um, and so we recognized that we were definitely hearing from the opposed perspective very strongly. Um, and that there were, I think there were 39 voices that spoke up in favor of uh, using Wikipedia, but we feel like there was not a really good position for people to voice support for Wikipedia because they hadn't seen how it would be used. Um, it's hard to be an ally of the abstract, right? It's it's something where we feel we're going to share an, an option or two really rooted in naming the movement with Wikipedia at the center. And again, if people give the same strong uh, outspoken uh push back on those concrete ideas, I think we're going to take that as a much stronger signal because now it's no longer the abstract idea of like, should the foundation just be called Wikipedia? That's not what we're proposing. We'll have some real name systems and people will even more excitingly be able to see themselves in the naming system um, because this project is not just let's give the foundation a new name. We got Kelly. Welcome Kelly. Um, this, this project is not just let's give the foundation a new name. It's also like, let's think about how we can show that the parts of our movement are all connected. And so if you encountered one part, you could start to perceive the whole. Um, this is very exciting for us, right? If you meet the chapter in your country or you go to a hackathon or an edit-a-thon and meet a user group, we really hope that you would start to learn just how big the movement is by encountering even that one node in the network. Um, and so that's what we're going to work towards. Elena, what was the second part of the question? Something about people leaving or something? Yeah, um, there was actually a related question in the chat that, like, what's going to happen if some people dislike a Wikipedia-based solution so much that they decide to leave? Like, how much is the board and the C team willing to let people go who want to leave as a result of any decision like this? Mm. Yeah, I mean, we should, it would be good to st start even talking about who we think would leave uh, and why. Um, I mean, we'll definitely recognize that Wikimedia is an identity. Uh, it's used by people to explain who they are um, and what they do. And as I understand that question, it's basically saying if this identity is changed, um, there are some people who may want to. They might feel like this is no longer the organization or the movement that they joined. Um, and I definitely hope that is not what people conclude. Um, I hope they understand that this is a like interactive, collaborative process. Um, and that if they want to, again, use the Wikimedia name in their groups, they can continue to do so. Um, but I do recognize that like we're not going to please everyone. And this, this process will certainly have frustration. We've already seen that. Um, change of any kind has a fundamental emotional quality to it, um, where we're going to see that people feel they don't like where things are going, or they don't agree with uh, the bulk of comments, or they agree with these set of comments and they think they should be weighed higher. Um, it's going to actually look a lot like a wiki project, um, <laughs> which is which is good, that's, that's who we are. Um, but of course, it's something pretty profound, which is like, this is kind of how wiki does branding. Um, and so like a lot of decisions, it's going to have like lots of points of view, different sets of data, challenges, uh, critiques. And yeah, there, there may be one or two people or not one or two, I couldn't estimate the number. There may be people who feel that this is not their movement anymore because of this change. I really hope that's not how they feel. Um, I, I don't, the board and the C team at the foundation have not like 
communicated to me any sort of departure tolerance. So there's no like number. Um, ultimately, we see it on the other side of the coin. We're making an identity system so it's easier for the movement to explain what it is. It's easier for the movement to have people join. Um, so we're actually kind of in a growth mindset rather than a, uh, a conservation mindset. We're not trying to keep this amazing movement that we have now as kind of like, just let's protect it. We're like saying, how do we help enable the growth we know we need for 2030, which is basically billions of more people joining and adding uh, their perspectives to our knowledge, um, which means that like, if the movement branding is successful, it works for many of us in the movement today, but even more importantly, it works for kind of the next generation, the people who also want to join this just damn remarkable effort to bring all the world's knowledge together in one place for free. Um, so we see that like, you know, th this, this, like we would never want to say we're trading out volunteers for new volunteers, but we do want to be minded that like, there's a whole world to reach. Um, and we think that our branding can help. Great. Um, so I think you, this next question you cover to some extent, uh, last week, but it's still being asked. So I wanted to kind of pose it in a different way. <laughs> you get it again. Let's do it. Um, Questions. Why, <laughs> yeah, here we go. Why is it that Wikimedia could not be included in any future? Well, yes. Um, so the first thing is, again, if people want to use Wikimedia, they can use it, they can keep it. Um, we found that in, in research, Wikimedia was very confusing and unclear to people. It was either confused with Wikipedia, um, where people would kind of experience it as a typo, um, or it was understood to be almost like a project, Wikimedia, in which case people understood it more like commons, um, a place where they could get media files, um, a website where they could get media files. We also found that if we asked people, like, have you heard of Wikimedia? There was a very low answer to yes. Um, and that means that we've used this as our collective identity for 17 years. We've done some just incredible things as a movement. Volunteers have made this one of the most celebrated parts of the internet. In fact, we see this amazing, journalists have started calling Wikipedia and the Wikimedia projects the best part of the internet or the last best part of the internet, or even sometimes the internet that we were promised, um, where you know we have a different policy on privacy, we have a different commitment to collective work, uh, we have a different economic model. Um, and so we were like, wow, there's so much enthusiasm. There still is, we know that. There's so much interest, excitement, passion, uh, appreciation for the results of our movement but there's so little understanding of the movement itself um, that people don't perceive just how human and volunteer driven this is. Um, and so that's why we basically realized the identity we were using, the brand we were using, Wikimedia, was not doing the work it needs to do. It needs to do a lot of work. It needs to make it so that when you see it, you're not confused by it, you understand it, or you quickly can make associations with it that pull you into our movement. Um, I think a good example here is Doctors Without Borders, right? Like, even if you don't know a single program Doctors Without Borders is doing, that name quickly tells you who's doing something and where they're doing it. Um, so it's, it's like as a brand, as a name, it's a very inspiring name. It, it's a passionate way to bring people into caring about your work. Um, so that's what I think uh, about Wikimedia. Great, thank you. Um, this should be a, a shorter answer probably, but there was a question asked last week about who sent the initial email that sparked the changes to begin with. And I'm actually unsure if that is in reference to who sent the initial email that proposed Wikimedia as a name, or who sent the email that you know, sparked all of this work. Um, so maybe you could quickly answer yeah. that. Yeah, I well, so I think I saw that was Bobby, Bobby Shabangu. Yeah. yeah, awesome. It was. I mean, 
Y'all, I couldn't see the chat during our presentation because it was like kind of my full screen here. So I was excited to just see everybody who showed up. Thanks for making the time to join us last week and again this week. And maybe if you're watching this in the future, hello in the future. Um, so yeah, I was excited that Bobby was there, that Meg was there. Incredible. Andrew, um, Bobby's question, I thought it was about the first email sent. And um, that was sent by Sheldon Rampton. 2003, um, Greg Varnum has has the exact link, uh, but basically that was the time where someone said, you know, in our in our kind of really rapid growth of history, if we look back, and there's probably here, there's people here I know who know this better than me, but 2003, like, we're really on a fast growth moment. Um, projects are spinning out in all sorts of directions. Policies are being developed about what is and is not appropriate for this project. Okay, make it into another project. That's when the proposal was made. Let's call these collectively Wikimedia. Fawaz. Hey, Fawaz. So Sheldon Rampton, 2003, email proposal. Let's refer to all these things as Wikimedia. Um, there was not one email other than that that sparked this um, this project. This was this project was not sparked by any one email. It's been long discussed. I know that uh, Eric Moeller uh, talked about it in 2007 um, as a like a branding consideration. Um, I think that was Wikimania Taipei that year. Um, and Guillaume Palma was there. Um, this has come up a number of times. Um, and it's always been a question uh, that the Board of Trustees has asked to the foundation, particularly to the Wikimedia Foundation's communications department um, that I'm in, Essie's in, Chris, Kim, uh, we're all in that department. It's always been a question of like, how do we stand in the world? What would be better if we changed how people understood us with our name and our brand? Great, so I have actually a very quick question that came up in chat that I want to answer. Um, because I'm sure it's, it's a burning curiosity for the person who asked it. Um, May 7th, what exactly is happening on May 7th and how are things being shared more widely? Then we'll go back into this. Yeah, May 7th, mark your calendars. May 7th, we are uh, sharing the long discussed naming proposals, like how we would actually consider renaming the movement parts. Um, so at that time, we will release multiple options uh, to, to how things would be readjusted in naming. So again, you would see like, right now it's Wikimedia Foundation, in this new naming system, it goes to this. Right now it's Wikimedia Deutschland, in the new naming system it would go to this. Right now, um, this user group is called women in red or black lunch table, here's how they would show that they're part of the same brand system. Um, so May 7th, we're gonna release multiple options of that. Um, and it will be a nice package. Um, we're gonna try to make it actually really easy. If you're an individual contributor, we want you to be able to go through this um, quickly, like 10 minutes to 30 minutes, like just being able to parse it. The parts are gonna be uh, really kind of clear. And then if you're one of our incredible affiliate liaisons, we're going to also give you some tools on how to share this with your mailing lists, with your telegram groups, um, on Wiki, et cetera, to get people to respond as well. Um, and really, we're going to basically, we're going to reveal these things. We're going to, we're going to put our seatbelts on. Everyone's going to have a lot of feelings and thoughts and ways that these could be better. And that's exactly what we want. We want people to tell us, like, this is terrible because this isn't that terrible. This actually seems cool. I would use this. I wouldn't use those other parts. We really want people to grapple with it as a, as a set of possibilities. So I think that this, um, the, the structure. Oh, how? Of yeah. I'm going to add, I'm going to add, yes. yes. All of the above. Um, email. Yes. We're going to send it out on mailing lists. Meta, yes, it will be on the project meta page. Um, if you're on one of the working groups, uh, we call those the brand network. There's one on meta and there's one on Facebook. It will also show up there. So Kira, it will go to many places. Great. So um, 
In terms of the structure and uh, there being multiple proposals involved, people being asked to engage with many proposals, I think that seems at odds with the assumption that some people hold that the outcome is already predetermined. Um, so this question is about the outcome being predetermined uh, or not. Um, if the name in question was not already made, why is it that the branding hub or Snow Hatch's website that they're running in parallel for this process? Why is it called brandingwikipedia.org and not brandingwikimedia.org? Yeah, this is a mistake. If, if we were looking at this now, we would have given it a different URL uh, for sure, because it's led to that wrong conclusion um, that this is already done. At the time, we were thinking that um, we were kind of like, how do we make a name for this site that makes sense to people inside and outside the movement? Um, I think now if we were going to do it, yeah, we'd give it a different name. I think actually like branding, branding Wikimedia also would have been confusing um, because it's branded. Rebranding Wikimedia.org would have been a little bit provocative but that's what this is, so that would have probably been the most accurate thing we could have called it. Great, thanks for that. And um, another clarification about Snowheta, the project design partner. Do they plan to participate on Wiki or do they see themselves exclusively participating off Wiki for this process? Hmm, hold up. Um, we're not going to see them that active on Wiki. Um, they are our design partners in this. So we know that we can actually be better at the Wiki work um, than they can. They are the design leads for us. And so their real specialties is um, taking in a lot of different perspectives, which is what they did with the brand concept and reconciling it down to the commonalities, um, producing ideas that we might not have because we are all so familiar with this that we ourselves can't, we can't kind of fully get away from the possibilities um, that we've already eliminated because we are so well established in an understanding of our system. And of course, they're incredible design partners. Um, so, you know, after naming May 7th, be there, um, we will go into design, graphic design, uh, consideration of logo elements, consideration of type, color. That's going to be really exciting. And actually, it's like that's the moment where we're going to see Snow had to flex, you know, kind of use their strength the most because that's really what they do most of the time, <laughs> rather than try to understand um, vast interconnected, you know, free knowledge, web-based movements. Like that's, that's, we're doing, they're doing that with us for the first time ever, but they do design all the time. Um, but yeah, simple answer, they're not gonna be that involved on Wiki. Um, everything that they produce will wind up on Wiki um, and it will be Wikiified by the project team. Great. So I want to move to two questions uh, about the projects. The first one is about Wikidata. Uh, I think that the shift to a Wikipedia foundation type name, or I would assume just a Wikipedia based name, uh, limits the importance of other projects like Wikidata. What do you think? So, yeah. The, so yeah, the question is basically if we choose Wikipedia as the center of naming, because it's a project, it basically elevates that project above the other projects, including um, in this consideration, Wikidata. Um, the first thing I'd respond is that like, like the movement itself, uh, the project team and the foundation love Wikidata and are excited about Wikidata. So the pursuit of this project is definitely not meant to cause damage to Wikidata. Um, it's actually meant to elevate Wikidata, right? Actually show stronger connection of why Wikidata is so important, is so vibrant. Um, and there, it's kind of worth considering that like there's a, again, there's a public understanding and a 
inside movement understanding of Wikidata that are really different. Um, like because Wikidata is an incredibly exciting, active project in our movement, it's super lively and there are uh, millions of entries being added. I've been doing some ski resorts near me um, and it's like a very vibrant project. Um, outside of our movement, people are not, haven't maybe even heard of it yet. Uh, when we did our studies in 2018, uh, we found that there was not yet a lot of understanding for Wikidata. It's certainly growing, but there wasn't a lot of understanding. So we see using Wikipedia as a possible center for naming would actually give Wikidata that additional boost. That's really the, the goal, not to put the projects in competition, but to recognize that Wikipedia's brand awareness, it's just world-class. Um, more than 80% of people in Western Europe and North America have heard of Wikipedia. In South America, in Africa, in Asia, we've seen that it's been fast growing in awareness from 20 to 30 to 40% awareness. Uh, and so Wikipedia as this beloved thing that people encounter and use on the internet all the time has the best brand awareness of all our projects. Um, and because of that, we think that using it as the naming system is an opportunity to increase the understanding of the other projects associated with it. It's a tool to make the other projects more visible uh, rather than, and I understand the concern, hide the other projects. It would be a failure of the brand system if in selecting a name like Wikipedia at the center, we hide the other projects. Our goal is to do just the other, just the opposite. And in fact, one of the six parameters we established for this project was um, supporting the sister projects, making the sister projects visible through the work. Um, a good brand example here is the Coca-Cola company. So Coca-Cola, of course, big multinational corporate um, organization. They have many products that they make. They're most famous for soft drinks. Um, and Coca-Cola is the best known of the soft drinks. But they also make a variety of other soft drinks. Sprite, Fanta, uh, the list goes on. Maybe some of you have been to their headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Maybe you've enjoyed a Coca-Cola product today. Um, in any case, they decided to use Coca-Cola as the name of their organization because of its elevated position, uh, because it's the best known of their products. It's basically a flagship uh, branding system. Um, but to just loop back around, if people feel the naming systems are hiding, eclipsing, or suppressing the sister projects, that's not a good uh, movement brand system. And we should be challenged to improve that. Great, so a, an interesting question that came in the chat that is kind of the opposite end of this spectrum. How about if we were to rename the Wikipedia project so that the WMF can have that name? Whew. I mean, I, I don't think I can answer that question. Um, I leave it to the, to the Wikipedians. But yeah, I mean, that sounds, like a possibility <laughs> that I will not, that's not going to be suggested by this project, but it's a cool suggestion here. <laughs> it's a cool exercise in critical thinking, I think. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, exactly. There's, it's like, this is, our system is elastic. You know, something that I've enjoyed uh, reflecting on with people in this project, uh, not, like, you know, people who joined us from across the movement is we change so much on our projects all the time. We update information, uh, we change the layout, we, we add new features. Um, our brand system should be alive like that too. It should be something we're refining and improving, right? That we're adapting. Um, you know, in technology, there's a phrase that like, if you don't update your code a lot, you basically start to have technical debt. Um, you start to have this, like all these things you haven't adjusted or maintained, and that starts to catch up with you. In some ways, this project is about brand debt, like these, these things that we haven't fully maintained. And so they've, they've stopped working the way we want them to. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. So when, when we think about like how all of the parts of our movement connect as names and brands and 
logos and colors, like that's something that we're going to always need to be working on and refining, right? Like what happens when uh, brands become more audio, right? Like they're spoken rather than said or seen in graphic systems. Like we're going to need an, an approach to audio. What does what Wikipedia or the Wikimedia movement sound like? Um, when perhaps technology becomes very uh, high emphasis on 3D objects, like should the should the logos all become three dimensional? Um, there's like exciting future possibilities to think about for branding. That again, we are we're kind of prototyping a process of working together on this, not just for this one time, but hopefully so we could do it again. We could work together on future branding updates. So that was actually the last question of the ones in the chat and the ones that we didn't answer from last week. If anybody else has other questions, um, feel free to unmute and ask now. We can wait for a little bit and see if anybody wants to take the mic. And if not, I'm sure I can find some questions to fill the rest of the time. So if you have a question, <laughs> please unmute, ask it. Hello, everybody. This is Farhat from Kazan. I'm here just to tell you that I've been interpreting all of this into Russian. I have a number of participants from various ethnic groups uh, listening live. They might not be understanding any English. I am unable to manage two devices to see if they have questions. But uh, just for you to let you uh, just for you to know that this was going on. Oh, that's amazing. Um, of course, if it, yeah, as ever, you know, we're on Wiki, uh, so we can take on questions at any time. Um, you know, this format here, uh, office hours, was is this is not going to be the only time we do it. Um, we want to be present in this way to have discussions, um, and it will be in addition to on Wiki uh, work rather than in substitution. Zico, I see you have thousands of questions, so you're a bit reluctant. Um, do you have one or two that are particularly pressing? Great, two is great. <laughs> me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, well, there are actually two questions. The first one is rather technical. I have tried to find information about the brand thing on uh, MetaWiki, and I didn't know where to start. So I believe that I found the page brand, but that was about current branding and trademarks and so on. So maybe you could um, come with some idea of how to be more visible on MetaWiki have more links maybe so uh, well there's the sub page of the strategy 2030 about branding then there's a page about brand network so that made it a little bit confusing for me for example to find the timetable i finally found it in the youtube presentation of last week so maybe you want to have a fresh start there and that would be helpful for some people uh, to find that those people who are not here every week and my other question is about um, we had this uh, input via Snowheader, fine, on that website, which is not a wiki, fine. We could not see the comments of other people. That's great because we don't want people to influence each other. But then, well, then it became black box. And finally, we got the answer that interconnections is the result. And this black box, maybe um, you could uh, in the nearby future give a little bit more transparency to that black box and uh, tell us about what were the feedback to the concepts and what was your process by which you have selected finally or have 
come to the to the track of finding then interconnections. So if you could uh, give a little bit, uh, this is not meant as a re as a reproach, but uh, I was struck by that. <laughs> I was I was wondering, okay, so how did we come from there to here? My fifty cents. Yeah, absolutely. I can start answering that question, and then Zach, I'm sure you'll have some stuff to add. Um, yeah, great point about elevating the main project page. If people are having trouble finding it, then that would make sense that uh, perhaps the concept work might feel like a little bit of a black box. Um, we, d we do have branding wikipedia.org, Snow Hatta's branding hub as part of the process. But every time we have a feedback moment in this process, there is a report generated about it and that report is published and linked on the main project page on MetaWiki. And so all of the concept work, um, which goes back to the workshops, there was a workshop in Oslo, workshop in Bengaluru, there was a workshop online, uh, where community members, 97 community members in total, um, did work around concepts, around what they thought the movement meant to them. And that was the initial selection of concepts that Snow had to work with. They tried to understand all of the concepts as a set, as a whole, how they work together, how they reinforce each other's meaning, and then distilled all of those concepts. There were 23 concepts that came out of the workshops, distilled those concepts, into a unifying overarching concept. Um, each of the workshops had a report that was published that talked about main themes from that workshop and the concepts that came out of that workshop. And then there were also online exercises that helped Snow had to do this distilling process in a way that was guided by how the community thinks that the communities think about, about free knowledge, how they think about the Wikimedia movement, um, and those online exercises were also summarized in reports that were linked from the main project page. Um, as soon as this current exercise is up, right now there is an exercise, an online exercise running about um, visualizing interconnection, where community members can go on and um, link to commons files, visuals that represent interconnection to them. As soon as that exercise is done, there will be a report again that comes out on MetaWiki that talks about not just visualizing the concept interconnection, but will also talk about um, more about the process of how Snow had to arrived at the interconnection concept. Um, so that's just a little bit about the documentation that we have going. Um, but I think that, yes, if it's not visible, then of course, it may look like a black box. I, I could totally relate to that. So we'll be convening as a project team to figure out how we can address that. Zach, do you want to add any more about the process of Snoheta distilling the 23 concepts into the final concept interconnection? I would like to add uh, multiple points here. Um, so, yes, Zico, these are two very good questions thank you for asking them and of course we do welcome the remaining 998 that you may have or however many is left in your queue um so yes the on on the the meta page for brand i think we can make that one of the places where we make this more visible um that this is this work is happening this is a great suggestion and rosie thanks for um jumping in to confirm that as well um i remember when we made when we when we revised that page back in 2016 i'm excited to get back onto the brand page on meta uh, and see how we can link it to this work and i wanted to thank chris and elena and kim for being incredible uh colleagues with us um se and i as they constantly help us do even more on wiki uh, more effectively so thanks for that in regards to the black box, um, Zico, I understand that, yeah, there's been a lot of visible work on the concepts, right? People gave ideas, they worked on them together, they provided them, then they were all hosted on the Snow Heto website and people gave uh, hearts, likes onto them and comments, all of which was shared and captured by Snow Heta, and then a decision was made about interconnection. So I see that's where you're pointing at. That's kind of the black box moment. Input given, outcome delivered. How did the input inform the outcome? 
Um, and just as Elena is saying, we can further document that and bigger commitment, bigger promise, uh, we can improve on that. So when we go into the naming, that will actually not be, that's when we, we intend to really produce a lot of documentation about. Um, we will summarize what we heard from community, uh, what we heard from affiliates. We're gonna summarize the responses to the specific ideas like proposal one, proposal two, proposal three, um, so that when we go forward, people will know why parts of proposal two have been dropped, why parts of proposal one have been kept, et cetera. We, we, I, I will just say that we really are committed to making that clear um, because that's how we make sure that the input that people kindly give, the guidance is trusted um, by us as people working on the project and by you all as providing that guidance. We can improve on uh, making the black box transparent and uh, we'll do so with, with some more documentation ahead. Okay, um, if there are and anyone else who wants to take the mic, I can ask some more questions. Um, there's been some discussion on Wiki about interconnection and on the mailing list as well. Um, some people seem to like it, some people seem to be confused by it. Um, how do you feel that the interconnection furthers the project's understanding of who we are as a movement? Um, I saw a great comment by Richard, and it was about Interwiki. Um, and Interwiki, um, I, I don't want to get this wrong, but my understanding is like Interwiki is, is some of the things we use that go between the projects and go between different, um, different parts of our sites. Um, in that regard, I think the exciting thing about interconnection is that it's about the fact that our projects are fundamentally interrelated, that they only really thrive when they reference one another, they build on one another, and that our movement only thrives when it reflects and connects in between different parts of the movement. And even more broadly, our entire movement is not alone. We depend on journalism, we depend on researchers, we depend on uh, photographers, on uh, archaeologists, of professors, of knowledge workers and makers around the world. Um, and so fundamentally, I see interconnection as more of a verb than a noun. Um, to interconnect is what a healthy movement would do. It would find new connections to make, and it would pursue making them. It would prioritize them. Um, and I think that's exactly what's made this movement strong for almost 20 years has been the growth mindset, um, the connective mindset, the expansion mindset of how much deeper and richer things could be. And there's lots of interconnections to provide. There really are. There's like the connections within our sites. Again, there's the connections between our projects. There's the connections between parts of our affiliates. Um, and so I read that as very, uh, I, I basically think interconnection is a very strong brand concept for us. And it will remind us in this project and beyond that like we have to constantly find ways to connect new things. Um, the strategic direction emphasizes the essential infrastructure for free knowledge and like infrastructure can kind of seem static um, or even not as a knock on the writers there, it can seem a little boring. It's like hidden. It's, um, it feels like, you know, a utility, but not something emotional. Um, the spirit of good infrastructure is that it's interconnected, that it works. And so I think that 
interconnection and infrastructure are super related. Um, so it also inspired me to think about the connection between um, brand concepts and the commitments we're making for 2030. Great. And can you talk a little bit more about how interconnection will be guiding upcoming work? I think that we've been talking about how this won't be um, a visible part of branding, but rather a guiding idea. And I think that's a little bit complicated to, to understand. So can you flesh that out a little bit more? How will this be guiding? Is that, that's the question. How are we gonna use it? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So this is a design project. Um, and is a, it's an open design project, really. And that means that we want to create a, a set of objects, a set of design elements. So I sometimes kind of illustrate it like if, if I had this piece of paper, you know, when we're done, there's like a squiggle and that's like, the new proposed logo we've all talked about. And then there's a set of naming, and, and this is kind of like the naming ideas, and here's how the naming ideas work. And if you're making a new group, you would, you would look at these. If you're trying to improve your group, you would use a different set. It's like a set of guidelines with design objects. That's what comes at the end of this. Um, to get to good outcomes, we work collectively gathering perspectives from across the movement, having people challenge the work and show us how it could be better. Um, in preparation for that, we've outlined these six qualities that it should achieve that people have told us the movement branding doesn't do now and it should do if we're going to change it. If we're gonna change things, it has to reduce confusion, it has to protect our reputation, it has to support the sister projects, it has to prevent legal risks, um, it has to inspire movement growth, and it needs to be something you can personalize and opt into. Those are the six qualities we captured. But those are just kind of like things we score, like as we look at options. How we actually make design choices is something that also comes from a spirit. Like what are you trying to animate about our organization? Um, and so if you're trying to animate the spirit of the Olympics, like what's the central spirit of the Olympic games? they probably have a sense for that. Um, if you're trying to animate the central spirit of NASA, what is it? It's probably not the objects like rockets or the people alone like astronauts and scientists. See you later, Essie. Um, it's probably something closer to exploration, a, 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 like a spirit. And what you do when you have that spirit is you use it to help inspire the approaches to visual objects to graphic objects and to naming systems. Like, does this have an interconnected spirit? It's kind of a, a final question that you can always ask. It might be the first question you ask, it might be the last question you ask, but it's a kind of a, an emotional alignment tool. Um, and so what you'll see is like, we're gonna have all these naming ideas and they're going to hopefully meet large parts of those six qualities that I outlined. Um, but they also will have to have a connection to interconnection as an idea. Um, and so you'll see that, you'll see how they build on each other and they show that the movement is made up of parts that are linked, that are reliant, that are um, connected between each other. So it's, it, I know it's like, it's not, it's basically gonna be easier to see in practice once we get to May 7th um, than to describe because describing it, I feel like one of these hand wavy like design people who's like, it will be in the spirit of the show, but that you're gonna see it. And um, honestly, I think interconnection is gonna help us for a while as a concept at the heart of who we are as a movement, just as infrastructure, essential infrastructure, and anyone can join us have helped us, or the vision statement, imagine a world, those help us kind of keep our, keep our minds set on a long distant point in the future that we're working towards. Great. Thanks so much. Um, and with those forward thinking thoughts, we are at time. Um, so I just, I want to echo what Zach said, that this is, this is the first of many office hours that we're going to have unstructured time for people to come bring their questions, work through some of the difficult stuff. This is a, 
a complex process, but a really rewarding process. So we really want to make sure that everybody, you know, understands what's going on and, and feels confident um, about what's coming up next. So big next steps, stay tuned for May 7th when the naming convention proposals are released and for any updates before then. And um, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope to see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.